I believe that if you're teaching history, deal with straight up facts, no mystery. Teach the students what needs to be taught, because black and white kids both take shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. it must be black history, my nother. Yeah, you know, you know, know. I was going to be bringing up the 1986 rhymes again, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's why you over there look like Carter G. Woodstock. <laughs> you know what I'm hey, 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 like uh, John Henry Clark said, history is a current event. You know what Whoa, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Coming Come in the game. Cool, with Dr. Cool, Clark. Man. Shout out to Dr. Clark. Word. And Word. Dr. Ben. Word. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And and, and we about to get it started up in here. Yep. What's happening? It's Kamal K. Franklin. Okay. You know Rolling with. Hey man, it's none other than Kalani Jamatanga, aka the Rebellion Starter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like well, today I'm starting a rebellion. Normally I start riots for <laughs> your white friends, but today it's a rebellion. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I go by the name of the Ear Doctor, and we got Minister Server. Okay. And it's your boy Jai. Okay, Jai Ear right. turns in the building. Well, I'm saying. And as always, Jai is, Jai is high. High. <laughs> no doubt. High. He's high off life. High. So high off life. Hey, 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 listen. Jai's high on life, y'all. I'm just saying. We always messing with that's our brother. Shout out to Jai. He's the most sober person in the room. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. A lot going on in the world. Okay. So you know a whole lot going on in the world, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first thing, we want to talk about some topics that's been happening in the world. Okay. So we got this cop in Rochester, New York, who actually pepper sprayed a nine-year-old girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know I saw that. So um, it, it's crazy because of the fact that her family... Uh, allegedly called the police mm-hmm. to, you know, she was, I guess, uh, what they consider unruly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I guess parents aren't the same. And they called the cops on the They called the cops on the little girl. Damn. Is that correct? That's that. That's about, yeah. That's yeah. They called the police on the little on girl. On nine-year-old. And, and they're trying to get her in the, in the uh, car, and the cop decides to handcuff her and pepper spray her. Now, I want to say this so, you know, for the police that's listening and all you other rat bastards out there, I'm going to tell you like this right here. Fuck with my babies is a misunderstanding. That's That's Mm -hmm. the bottom line. If I saw anybody pepper spraying a nine-year-old, I'm in it. So that's that's just that. So say what you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next up, yo, we got just some some crazy shit. Like over one million people. I'm not crazy it is, but now at least over one million people have been vaccinated vaccinated in Georgia for COVID. So that those numbers are are going high, so high. I, I just saw. I just saw a um. A lady uh, got a got a vaccination up in um, what's that, Gloucester, mm-hmm. and um, I saw that she was vaccinated, and six hours later she transitioned. Oh damn! Oh, damn. You know, they're falling off. Yeah, so well, I, I don't know. That's, that's a lot. They're not falling like one, <laughs> one out of a million. I mean, I'm, like, I'm, I'm just saying. Out of, I'm saying like hey, lies. That's one out of a million. If, 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 if that one out of a million is your black ass, <laughs> well, that's true. And you wouldn't be sitting there like, oh, it's just me, folks. Yeah. It's you, only me. You and Hank Aaron. Yeah, you, know you and Hank Aaron. But that's, like, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. Anyway, uh, Kamal Frank and Hank. Yeah, anyway, oh, you back at it. I might, so, I might get that. I might what, get that what, what else is popping, man? Yo, so your boy Biden is... Who's boy Biden? Your Start boy Biden, shit. you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> Biden, oh. okay, and, and Kamala. But yo, anyway, go ahead. That's true indeed, yo. <laughs> so your boy is talking about uh, these 1,400, not 2,000, okay. but 1,400. Some people are saying that, you know, well, you know, 600 already passed, so he's going to do the 1,400. But he's still saying now he's going to do the 1,400 and put some further restrictions on who may get the 1400 mm. even if they wind up passing it. So one of the issues is, of course, one, this dude was popping mad garbage beforehand. Okay. Give me your vote. Everybody's getting that $2,000 check. Right. Now, once he's in, he's like, well, maybe 1400 maybe not as many people as before. So as always, folks like pull out pull out all the stops to get you to go vote for some fool. Then once they get in, they backtrack it like a mother. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the yeah. old white man in the tailpipe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's how they do. I mean, for those of you that was voting for him, for those two stacks that... uh. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, um, aside, aside from and that, we got, well, we got some other shit. We got, uh, I think, Minister Server going to take the lead on this. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's a congressperson. Yeah. Oh, right, what's going on with her? Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's actually from Georgia, okay. she's the, uh, the the QAnon uh, congressperson. Okay, and uh, she got put on the Education Committee and the Finance Committee, but the Democrats wasn't having it. Some of her old tweets came up when she was talking about murdering Nancy Pelosi and Ooh. and uh, you know all kind of crazy QAnon stuff. But today, the House stripped her of all her Senate 
uh, committees. So she's out of here. So again, oh. but now she's still gonna be in the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so again, yeah, yeah. even though she's not on the committees, she's still in the house. But they said oh. she was she was um, elected by the people here in Georgia, North Georgia, which is crazy. But uh, you know now we gotta make sure that the people are holding her accountable for all the stuff that she's doing. It's a big eye on her. So uh, fuck you, Marjorie Taylor. Oh Green. damn! <laughs> all right, all right. And that's straight from the minister. When the minister, when the minister say fuck you, right. you on, know what it is for me. For her. Come on, man. God. You if he say, say fuck you, if the man of God. Oh, yeah. 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 I was shocked by that. I right. mean, Shamalama Zumalama. <laughs> anyway. And then our last big topic that's been popping off now is it's been found out. I think, what's her name? Julie Jenkins uh, Fancellini? What's her name? Fa Hold yeah, Italian name. Fancellini. Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold she, up, Julie uh, Jenkins. Julie Jenkins. <laughs> I know, she's half black. <laughs> yeah, oh, she got a Jenkins. She got Jenkins in her. She got Fancellini. All white folks have black. <laughs> <laughs> Every other night, they got a little whatever. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Well, apparently, she's an heiress to the public's fortune, and yes. she gave. Three hundred thousand dollars yes. to help pay for the rally, mm. yes. which was then became the overthrow mm -hmm. to get uh, Trump back in office, and now she's getting a lot of heat, and folks are talking about boycotting uh, Publix. Well, I'd like to say tonight, in honor of Publix, I would say that FTP stands for Fuck the Publix <laughs> and the motherfucking heiress <laughs> Julie. What the fuck is her name is Julie Jenkins. Jenkins. I got black in me. Julie Jenkins, Kathleen. <laughs> <Fratellini. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's cool. I mean, I don't really give a fuck because America's financed off of uh, slavery and imperialism mm -hmm. and all this other shit. So, I mean, that's what come with it. But um, I won't be shopping at Publix. Uh, yeah. To all the Publix workers, you know, community movement builders will be hiring. Hey, Call hey. my man, Kamal, and uh, he'll, put, he'll put you on. Yo, yeah, anyway. before we talk about the guests we got on, I'll get to give a shout out to our Patreon people okay. for this we week. We got Gregory A. What? We got the Gregory A. A. We got Ethel Jamila. Sinqueria. Oh, I got that name right. Yeah. Boy. Hey. Good God Almighty. That was good. Hey, hey, listen. hey, man, listen, man. That hooked on Phonics set, we yeah, got that you. Right. That you know shit paying off, boy. That was Morris Brown appreciate right it, there. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Man. Good looking, good looking. Man, so I'm let's proud get of you. To, let's get to our guests and our, uh, who we're going to have on tonight. Okay. So uh, one of the main topics we're going to deal with tonight is Haiti, because uh, the folks have been Check it out, news. Um, Haiti is on fire. Haiti's been um, on fire for quite a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's now it's reaching a level where, uh, you know, any day now things can kick off and things can get serious. And so we have uh, Dr. Mamira uh, Prosper, who's going to be with us tonight. Okay. Um, she's from Haiti. We're going to do a further introduction, but that's going to be a main topic. And tonight we also have... Our musical guest, Mike Flo. Yeah, oh, yeah. DJ Mike Flo will be in the building as well. And I, I want to point out, because of the fact that um, since we're talking about Haiti, which is a very important topic, and I'm mm -hmm. glad that we're finally building on Haiti. We've talked about the Congo and a number of other different places throughout the uh, throughout our, our tenure. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, right now there are 230 uh, anti-government protests around the world. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, when you watch World News Tonight in America, it don't really contain the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so we, we want to really start to get into that shit. Every uh, week, I think that we should really dedicate ourselves to giving a few minutes to some of these different uprisings that's going on because there's brothers and sisters that's putting in a lot of soldier work out there. That's right. And all we're hearing about is Black Lives Matter in America. Mm -hmm. and, um, Cardi you know, B and yeah, everything else. Fuck all that. We don't care about your silhouette challenge yeah. or any of those other <laughs> dropping real. like it's hot. Whatever the fuck you call it, you know what I'm saying? Keep your nasty ass clothes on. Ah, Let's deal with this revolution. Right, so to keep the fuck I'm talking. But anyway, yo, we're gonna be right back when they get culture. Yeah. Back yeah. Peace so much, love. I am Minister Server. Right here with your black story. Y'all know who this is? This is Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Now, he is the father of black history. Dr. Carter G. Woodson was one of the first black people to graduate from Harvard. In 1915, he did the first black journal documenting the accomplishments of Negroes in the United States of America. Now, in 1926, he began Negro History Week as a project for Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Now, later on, it was turned to Black History Month. Now, people always say, well, why do we get the shortest month of the year? Well, Dr. Carter G. Woodson chose the month of February because of two people that he admired, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln, whose birthday is both in the third week of February, which is when Negro history started. So listen, don't fall for the hype about the shortest month. Learn your black story on Renegade Culture. Word. What's happening, Renegade Culture's in the building? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Tonight yeah. we're talking about some very hot topics. Mm -hmm. Some heavy things that's happening in the world. Around the whole planet. 
particularly in Haiti. Yes. Um, and so we want to really uh, start off by introducing our guest tonight, Mamira Prosper, okay. who is, uh, I should say, Dr. Mamira Dr. Mamira Prosper. No, Wait, doctor, two, do- the good two, doctor. two doctors in a row. Yo, we coming up. La- we coming la- up. Last week, doctors got us in, doctor got us in the newspaper. Uh-huh. Oh, true, yeah. true. <laughs> We're banned by the white folks, but go um, ahead. <laughs> so let me, a brief introduction. The sister is a PhD, has a PhD in global and social cultural studies okay. with a concentration in cultural anthropology. She's also an assistant professor of Africana Studies at Davidson College. And most importantly, she is the director of the Pan-African Solidarity Network with an organization called Community Movement Builders. Oh, Without further ado, oh, Sister Mamira Prosper. How are you doing, oh, sis? Oh, oh. Dr. Mamira Prosper. Thank oh, you. Too. Thank you for having me. I don't even think you like it, Mr. Michael. I'm the coordinator. I prefer that. The coordinator? coordinator. She's like the hierarchy. Yes. I don't think she yeah. likes it when you call her sister either. I called her sister one time. She gave me the strange look. You, you like just called her sister. I know. My bad. I hey, that sweater is adorable, though. The sweater. Uh, a, <laughs> she dressed up for 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 our show. The man said the sweater is he adorable. adorable. Oh. I've never heard. He's so sweet. I got a crush on you. The same person who's been calling me missing ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. they, they, yeah. they was calling you. That's that. right. Okay, yeah. okay. So anyway. Yeah. So let's get down to. I mean, this is really. Uh, there's a lot going on in Haiti, um, and, and some of this it feels like you know there are no heroes. Um, actually, uh, with some of sort of the top line news. So I want to get into just uh, for you just to tell people in general what is happening now. We know there's a strike happening. We know the president is, I think, refusing to leave office. Um, yes. And then there's been a, a rash of kidnapping uh, by gang members. And murders. There's been associated murders and rapes. Yes. So can you talk to us? And you just got back from Haiti not too long ago. Can you talk to us about what's happening on the ground right now? About the real black Trump that's out there. It's worse than <laughs> right. Trump. Actually, um, so I wanted to first, you know, since you guys brought up Biden, talk about, you know, what he's doing in relation to Haitians, specifically just on Monday, deported a bunch of folks Mm -hmm. to a country that we know, as you said, right, is on fire. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, you know, also echo the fuck Biden sentiment. All right. Yes. Um, But anyway, yeah, so specifically what's going on in Haiti more immediately this week. Um, February 7th is an important date for Haitians. February 7th, 1986 is the day that essentially we overthrew the dictatorship of the Duvalier. So it became sort of an, an, you know, a symbolic date for a president to take office in Haiti. So that's that. That's the deal with the date. Now, the specific issue is that um, Jovenel Moïse was the current president, right? The opposition, including right folks on you know, grassroots folks, think that his term should end February 7, 2021. He and his party argue that they should end February 7, 2022. And all of that is around the whole, when did his term actually begin? And his term, he actually started being officially the president in 2017 because the 2016 elections were contested because people took to the ground then, right? To say, this is not the person we actually voted into office. So already the beginning of his term was contested, right? That mm-hmm. folks didn't want him. And, and I think there's a way the news, a little bit of news coming out of Haiti or talking about Haiti really makes it look like it's between the opposition and this party, right? And erases the grassroots people-based movements, right? That are happening, that even make the opposition have power on the ground, right? Bodies got to show up and it's not the opposition that's really pulling them out. You know, folks are out there for all the reasons that I think you're pointing to every time you say, right, rebellion, revolution, that they're living in a shithole, right? And then, this is, and then they want to challenge racial capitalism and how that affects their lives, right? So like you said, come on, there's no hero emerging that anybody can sort of encroach, you know, or like, you know, hitch their wagon to whatever that expression is in English, right? They, 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 there's no one figure. Moïse Jean Charles, sort of a spinoff of an IEC, very populist. Um, he does shit like show up on a horse, dressed up like revolutionary leader at protests. Um, but, you know, he was deeply embedded in parliament and has gained some riches that and nobody know where it came from, right? So there is no real figure emerging out of this, like the person that we in the international, I guess, should look to. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe that's a good thing because we're always looking for that messiah, that leader, and we put a little too much on them and we forget about all the people who do the work on the ground. Mm-hmm. 
But anyway, so this, this is the big issue mm -hmm. this week. And it's really a culmination of two years of protests where folks were already asking him for, to leave power. Can you talk a little bit about can you talk a little bit about the, the gang issue? Because we spoke about that earlier um, and it's really become now significant. Can you talk about who these gangs are and, and what the actions that they have taken and who's right. who's who's supporting them? Or how did they get their how did they get their weapons and so forth? Right, right. Well, one of the things about what's happened over the years is as protests have increased, right? The state has to perfect its, you know, apparatus of repression, right? So besides obviously unleashing the police on protesters and, you know, there are record numbers of people shot to the head, right? You know, they're not in the hundreds, but there's several dozen political prisoners so far, right? But one of the ways that the state has unofficially, right, if we think about even in the states, right, how vigilantes, white vigilantes operate as, right, extra legal, right? They're not part of the state, but the state gives them cover, right, and power to do what they do with, that, with impunity, right? So this is why folks are linking the gangs to the state, right? If you're supposed to have control over your borders, you can't tell me that you have 600,000 illegal guns just floating around. Like, where did they come from? How do you even know that there's 600,000, right? Mm -hmm. And who's bringing them in? And I think one of the things I brought up with you, um, Kamau, is, all these years when Haiti, right, is burning and the images that we're getting, right, you know, development projects, quote unquote, are moving forward, right? Those things have not stopped, right? Um, and so the gangs are also very important in terms of, right, keeping people terrorized so folks are not also seeing all that is happening around them. Does that make sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and one of the things that they've done is kidnap folks, right? And they're not kidnapping the all the people we already know are rich. Like everybody in Haiti knows there's eight families who have all the money. Mm -hmm. Yet not one of them is being, right, kidnapped. And it's just the regular folks. I can't even call them middle class folks, right? They're working class folks, perhaps, you know, who speak a little French, right? Who are being kidnapped and being asked for hundreds of thousands of US dollars that I can't even put together, right? And most of the people being targeted are women, single women, right? Particularly if they're out alone. You know, if you're driving a car, you're most likely to be a target as well, right? And there's, you know, they're raping them. And sometimes not even waiting for the ransom, right? So there's a way, right, and we've seen this used over and over by dictatorships that, you know, you rape the women, you silence them, but you also silence their families, right? The men and their families and everybody else, right? It gets terrorized because you know that's the price you pay for, right, saying anything. And the, the, one of the, the major moves that folks feel is clearly pointing to the state being involved in these gangs and the kidnappings is 2018 November in a La Saline neighborhood known for its militancy, right? So if people are out there protesting in Port-au-Prince, La Saline is there. And it's still very much a big Aristide base. And, you know, Kamal will know I'm not going to be like, Aristide is like, the answer and the Messiah, right? But I recognize that he's powerful still today, right? In terms of people seeing him as, right? He could have been the answer. But anyway, these folks that were targeted, La Salin, the guns that were distributed, it's even the UN report, right? So I'm talking about white people's report mm -hmm. have pointed to the Haitian state and high, you know, dignitaries and high places having given money for the guns, Right, paid the gangs and also asked the police to stay away because this massacre happened in the middle of the day. 71 people, 11 women raped, and it's not just that they killed them, they chopped their bodies parts and they piled them up like on top of trash, right? So those are clear signals when those kind of things happen. And right, investigations show you clearly that the state or parts of the state has something to do with it. There's never an investigation two years later, mm -hmm. right? And the state said nothing, as if this shit never fucking happened, right? And so I think that these are the things that people are pointing to. If, you, if you're hearing that folks are saying, you know, these gangs are related to the state, right? There's no clear, you know, chain of command that Moise said, do this, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are supposed to be, and, and Moise has said in November 2020, after God, he is next, hmm. right? In terms of 
who rules this land. Mm -hmm. so then I guess the guns are also right your responsibility. That's right. And 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 I'll I'll stop there because I think you'll ask some other questions and I I can. Mm -hmm. So more, know, keep going. Maurice makes Trump look like uh, uh, cannon fodder, huh? Yes. Uh, I mean, yes. It, it, you know, and, it, and it's crazy because of the fact that uh, you ask the average African in America about what's going on in Haiti and they're clueless about what's going on. Um, throughout the years, there's been uh, serious political corruption in Haiti. Uh -huh. um, there's been, uh, I believe last year, there was a political assassination um, um, uh, right up in uh, in the House, I believe. And uh, I can't think of the name of the place. Uh, was it Parliament or? Oh, you're talking about the lawyer. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I can't, it was I can't. the lawyer. I'm not sure what the equivalent. He's like the chairman of whatever bar association. Yes, Dorval or something yeah. like that. Dorval, exactly. And he was basically murdered. You know, this is the speculation, right? There's no investigation going on presently. He lives like down the block from where the president's, you know, right. um, residential uh, house is, right? And he was over the years challenging. The con you know, saying that the president was in unconstitutional, that he was essentially ruling all by himself because there's no parliament and ruling by a decree, right? So he's just passing executive orders over and over again. And this guy was basically, you know, challenging him on television, right? All over the press and saying that everything that this party is doing um, is essentially unconstitutional and they couldn't have none of that you know, going on. So, you know, he was murdered we, in the house, in front of his house, yeah. What would you say the connection between um, U.S. imperialism and Haiti? What, what's the, uh, you know, is it, is it clear cut? How, do, how does the masses of... Um, you know, I, I'm just going to have to make a move. We got to call it, it's just the colony of the United States, right? That entire Haitian economy is designed to fit U.S. interests, mm -hmm. point blank. Right. So, you know, we don't get to have passports and we get deported back to that, you know, to, to that land. But it's very there's nothing that happens in Haiti that Washington hasn't decided. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can see, you know, and this man, you know, might work for Kamal's, you know, sympathies. Right. When I did, right, when there was like brief number two, three months of protests, like dude was gone. Mm -hmm. Moise has been protested from the fucking beginning, 2016. And then he's still here. He's still here, right? So it's clear that the U.S. Um, has a hand in it, right? They keep coming out with statements, you know, um, applauding the democratic efforts of this current president, right? They're, they're always issuing statements. They're, they're, at, they were, they're, they're celebrating with him at every turn, whatever, you know, fucking national holiday there is, right? They clearly support. In fact, you him. said, I think you, uh, the Black the uh, uh, black Caucus huh? also came out with a letter of support for Maurice in terms of staying in office longer. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I have to look closer at the signature, right? But that, you know, there are efforts by Haitian American elected officials, right, to say something. Mm -hmm. And the... And I've said this maybe to you, come out in our conversation, the Haitian Americans in New York specifically, um, elected officials have been maybe maybe if they're progressive on some immigration stuff, you know, they say it. Mm -hmm. That in fact like they were folks who invited, for example, the grandson of Duvalier to come speak, you know, in Albany, New York, right, capital of New York, on flat Haitian flag day. Mm -hmm. where he got to talk about how his father was an exceptional statesman, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have the Haitian-American community very much because they're caught up in, you know, that sort of black excellence, you know, or moving on up thing <laughs> mentality that they see Haiti very differently in terms of what they're going to support, right? Mm -hmm. And they're pro-capitalism. They're pro-making that shit look like Miami, right? And, and wanting to come in and be the big bosses of right because they are unfortunately you know are are imperialists because what the thing about the u.s and what is understood now after occupying so many of us black people in the caribbean is that you know what you send in your proxies mm -hmm. right when bill clinton showed up in 1994 with ice he showed up with a bunch of like black 
Asian American people and the U.S. troops to make sure that that shit was like, you know, didn't feel like some white supremacist invasion to us, right? And I, I, I was there in the country. I remember, I, mean, I was a kid, but I remember that. Mm -hmm. In 2004, when the U.N. occupies Haiti, they send the Brazilians. And they start out, you know, the occupation with a friendly soccer match between the official national soccer team of Brazil and the national soccer team of Haiti. Right? And they're like, look, it's all the other black people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this can't possibly be a military occupation, right? And so the U.S. isn't always directly there, right? Though they are because, you know, it's said to be that the, the U.S. embassy in Haiti is the fourth largest in the world, the largest in the American region, right? And you're like, what the fuck are you guys doing here, right? Mm -hmm. U.S. troops are permanently on Haitian ground. Mm -hmm. Permanent. They're just already there. So let's, right? stop, let's stop there. And so when we come back, we're going to talk more about, a little bit more about the history of Haiti and why it's so important uh, to the Americas to control Haiti um, actually, you know, Haiti being the only successful slave revolt in the first African Republic. So we're going to come back with more information and conversation on Haiti as soon as we get back. Renegade Culture. Kube Tech, Boule Kai. We're in the building. Renegade Culture. Fuck what you heard. Burn this motherfucker down. Cut the head off. Let's go. Oh, what? Now, you, you had it right. You flipped it. I did. Cut off the head. Burn the house. I didn't say that. Ah, okay. You just flipped it. Ah, okay. He can well, really speak I'm, English, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm boule high right now, so edit that shit. Okay. <laughs> that was good. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. So we like him for a snappy comeback. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's start that shit over. No, that was good. No, we, we what are you talking about? Okay. You? Well, fuck it. I'm good. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> no, we back with our sister, uh, Bamira Prosper, Doctor. Doctor. Bamira Prosper, the You're good doctor, right. and she's breaking down the situation that's happening in Haiti right now. Um, and one of the things that we touched upon at first when you get a little bit more into is that there's been a call for a general strike in Haiti, which is happening now. Obviously, it's related to the president. So you gave a little bit more details about who's calling the strike um, and what people expect to try to get out of it. Right. So the expectation is what folks have wanted since January 2019 when they finally said we want this president out because he refused essentially to allow the the trial or even an investigation into the Petro-Caribe scandal, right, which is the money that the state, his party, when they were in power, right, the first round stole all about $2 billion of Venezuela's, mm -hmm. you know, very generous loans. Um, and we could talk about that if you will, if you want. But essentially, right, folks already wanted him out. And this date is coming up, right? And people have sort of used it as another opportunity to do another wave of protests to get him out, right? Mm -hmm. And this is also important because he's, you know, he's ruling on his own, and then he's also calling now for a new constitution, right? That would extend the rights of the president, right? That would allow more foreign investment, right? Because this has been the, you know, since Desalines, right? The, you know, different heads of state have always been a little careful about the whole allowing, right, non-Haitians coded for, you know, whites mm -hmm. coming in and buying land, right, and being and controlling our resources, right? And so this constitution is a move. Many, many people behind it are Haitian Americans, for example, who now have U.S. passports, right? They have U.S., um, you know, trade partners, if you will, right? So there's these interests about changing the constitution, and folks are like, how are you calling it an election that you're completely controlling, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody who's even on the electoral committee to organize the damn thing. You're doing it on your own. You want to change the constitution, right? So everyone, you know, it's he's been at it for these four years, right? So every couple of months, there's another general strike. This is not the first one. Mm -hmm. There have been several different ones that have been called, right? And perhaps been more successful. But I frankly think people on the ground are a little burnt out. And I think the last couple of months, 2020, of like kidnappings and rapes and murders have really, you know, slowed people down a bit. There's been continual attacks, not just La Saline, but another important, you know, neighborhood, militant neighborhood in Port-au-Prince, Bel Air. They're constantly being attacked, right, by the gangs, where you have images of white right, women running out there, you know, leaving their homes with children on their arms, right, and spilling out into the streets. 
So there has been a little bit of a, a, a burnout, I think, on the part of the movements, you know, and this is another another wave of it, but I don't think it's anything like it was in 2018. You know, frankly, I told my comments, I was like, you guys seem way more optimistic than I can feel, right, the energy or momentum towards really pushing this guy out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm presently translating some note right now, you know, where it's like, you know, we demand that he leaves type of thing. But I, I'm not confident that that's going to happen because I think that the amount of energy people put out there for the last two years, um, which is exponentially greater than what they had to do to get IC out and he was able to leave in you know, a couple months, I, I just don't think this guy is going to really be ousted. And he's really figured out how to have control, full control over the space, right? We have... The army is back, right? This is the army that Agassi disbanded in 1994 because it was the army that led his coup d'etat. It was the same army that was under Juvalier. It was the same army that was trained by the U.S. when the U.S. was occupying Haiti back in 1915, right? Mm -hmm. So you have essentially this army brought back. And is the army fighting fucking foreign troops? Like all the foreign troops are already in the country. So who are you fighting? Right? Who are, you, who are you getting all these tanks for and all these military-grade weapons to fight? And it's, it's clearly not the gangs because they're able to run the space as they want, right? So who, who are you preparing to fight? So, it's clearly the Haitian people, right? It's clearly right the, the actual citizens of the place because the police isn't going out to everybody. The gangs are po- posting on fucking Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> like, you know, like they're posing with their guns and they're... We know where they live. They had a march two weeks ago against kidnappings and hard life in Haiti. And the police secured their march. And when regular protesters, right, grassroots folks show up, they get shot at and thrown tear gas, right? So I, I feel that, you know, it's it's clear to some of us putting all this together, mm-hmm. right? Like, who, who, who the gangs are. But I, I mean, I just think that the momentum is a little broken. I don't think the general strike has the amount of um, power that it had two mm-hmm. years ago to shut down the place. Mm-hmm. When you talk about uh, U.S. involvement from troops to propaganda to um, uh, funding the whole nine, um, we know that in, in the past they've used different entertainers to creep into the areas to make sure that, you know, the, the, the popular vote comes along. That, that goes mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. from the U.S. to, to Cuba sending... Uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce down that way mm-hmm. as far as the government, mm-hmm. and um, even in Haiti with Wyclef Jean. Can you talk mm-hmm. about Wyclef's involvement in uh, uh, Haitian politics? Because we know that he has a, a relative um, down there that was uh, instrumental in keeping this uh, fiasco going uh, a few years back. Well, at some point, Wyclef was a candidate or was trying to be a candidate for presidency. Um, this is the same time that the first Michel Martelly, who himself also is an entertainer, there's something about, you know, all these entertainers rising to power around the same time. But, and, you know, Michel Martelly kind of reminds me of Trump, you know, in terms of some of the lewd stuff that he says, particularly about women. But, you know, Wyclef was there briefly. He actually got shot. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was, I was, I was happy to see he got shot. I mean, you know, I was like, that's, that's all right. His music sucks. He sucks. He killed me slightly, oh. and then he came back to the states. And there was an article that came out about how he's going to go to Brown and go learn about more about Haiti. Like after you were running for presidency, mm-hmm. I'm a little confused, right? Um, but I don't, I don't know that his role is much greater than that, honestly. Um, since. And, you know, speaking of entertainers, um, Moise welcomed in the north of Haiti a couple months ago. And I know you must have seen this. Like, m- there's a mad memes of Kanye dancing. Oh, Kanye, yeah. You must know this. Kanye yeah, yeah. came to Haiti, like, a couple months ago. And there's a million videos of him doing little, you know, Haitian dances. And I guess he's being invited in to sort of do what the Akon project for Senegal. Like, he's going to do some... I don't know Kanye Village in North of Haiti. I'm not really sure. It's not we we don't, we haven't found out quite yet what all the plans are. But there was a lot of, you know, welcome to the first Black Republic. Mm-hmm. Ironically, for Kanye, right? But 
um, yeah, th there's definitely, I'm not sure all that that's going to yeah. turn out. So it's, it's, I mean, I, some of this might be obvious to people who are well informed, but for folks who don't even, who don't know enough about some of the history, um, it seems, you know, obviously the U.S. has particularly targeted Haiti, mm -hmm. um, the U.S., Europe, um, to continue to make sure that Haiti doesn't strive or Haiti's not free. And I would say it's targeted even more so than other Caribbean nations or, and or other uh, similarly situated nations, um, you know, maybe except for in some ways Cuba, but maybe even more than Cuba since it's been around for so much longer. Um, what do you, like the sort of the, the origins of, 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 let's say, white supremacy being antagonistic to Haiti um, to this day. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I do this with my students and they're like, oh my God, you're going too far back in history. But I'll say, I, I won't go too deeply in it, but to say at least, right, that in 1804, what Haiti does, right, what, what the enslaved and maroon people, and even the free blacks, right, and got, you know, they were there, they're problematic, talk about them too, right, but they got together, right, and overthrew colonialism, slavery, at a time in which, right, this is the world order, right? Africa's under occupation, right? Africans are being kidnapped and shipped over to the other side of the world. Everywhere else that there's a Black person, right, there's formal slavery, right, legalized. And so what Haiti does is not exceptional because we know Black people have rebelled since the minute we were kidnapped, right, from the village to the boat, every single moment. There are specific circumstances that make the Haitian Revolution possible, successful, right? And so what happens at the time is that, you know, it, this is the only black independent nation state. And the U.S. has, right, millions of enslaved Africans. The U.S. has not established diplomatic relations with Haiti until 1862, right? So we know it's about to be, right, that civil war moment, right? And so that's 60 years almost of Haiti existing. The U.S. was trading, you know, because, you know, they'll do that. They, they still traded with Haiti. Haiti essentially experienced a blockade, nevertheless, where they were only supposed to trade with France. France imposed a debt on Haiti in 1825 and said, you have to pay us back for lost property, a.k.a. all the black people, right, that were no longer slaves. So you have from the beginning of Haiti's history, right, saddled with debt, not recognized diplomatically, right, by the European powers, because they're really the only ones free, quote unquote, in the space, right? And so it's shutting it out. Uh, and so there's, you know, that's happening all of the 19th century. And by the time that you're turning into the 20th century, the U.S. now, right, is feeling itself, it's feeling its power, it's wanting to push out and be, become a real empire occupies the Caribbean, occupies Haiti, occupies Dominican Republic. They were already in Cuba. They were already in Puerto Rico, right? And so most folks studying right, Haiti have to zoom out and look at Haiti within the region, within the Americas and the role that it plays, not only as a challenge to white supremacy, but because of this challenge, making sure that Haiti stays at the bottom. You have to have a bottom, right? That's how you drive, you drive prices down, right? Wages down. If you want to pay, you know, America, there's a quote from Bill Clinton talking about some factory he helped put in Haiti, and he says, I know 20,000 um, 20, Americans would kill for this job, right? So there is obviously, right, capitalists are thinking about all of us as, you know, workers, right, and just situating us in our different positions depending on if you're a citizen or not, right? If you're black or white, or anything, right? And in Haiti, there has to be a bottom. There has to be a place where the minimum wage is the lowest, right? In order to justify the hierarchy of wages. Does that make sense? Like, there's a multiple role that Haiti plays, but also militarily, diplomatically. Like, Haiti's been used since, you know, 2004, when the UN came to occupy the country when the ousted I see the second time, right, has come to be an important military, diplomatic, you know, not in U.S. Venezuela relations, right? U.S. has always been fighting against any forms of, you know, uh, non capitalist, anti capitalist, right, governments. Mm -hmm. And Haiti became, right, if Haiti is this the poorest site, the site with the least, right, sort of, um, state that actually wants to, you know, develop the place, because that's also that, right? I know we give a lot of shit to U.S. for crushing Haiti, 
But a lot of us, you know, and when I put on my Haitian hat, I'm like, you know, but fuck these niggas up here who are supposed to be like running this and actually protecting us, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the same way we talk here in the States about the black misleadership, you have all these folks, right, who have control of the country and who over and over again sell it. They mm -hmm. sell it mm -hmm. over and over again. And by the way, for like scraps, right? Because like, Black people are making the billions, and then you just got cut off, you know, a million dollar check, and you got a cute house. Like seriously, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to make it seem like the U.S. is just smashing us completely without also acknowledging that there are a set of us in Haiti, right? The elites. So I'm talking about the oligarchs, the big merchant capitalists, and a whole bunch of sort of, you know. Uh, I don't know how else to make money, but to come loot the state folks, right? Mm -hmm. Who are controlling the space, right? And who are benefiting from U.S. imperialism, including these Haitian Americans who are, you know, often speaking on behalf of Haiti and never saying the fucking thing that we actually want them to say, right? So I, I, I just want to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't put okay. it all on the U.S. No, no, we glad you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck the U.S. still. We know that <laughs> yes, neocolonialism neo exists. Fuck the U.S. still. Yeah. But I just want to say, yeah, right? Yeah. That there are these, like, sell-out Negroes who yeah. are running that place yeah. that we can't give a free pass to, right? That's right, yeah. Jovenel just said last week, two weeks ago, he was like, you know, they, not the white people, the imperialists he keeps sitting at the table with who keep telling him what to do, but they, right, the, the opposition, are fighting him because he's some kind of reincarnation of this Aline. What? Hmm? That's Aline. Yeah, people are just like, oh, they hate me because, you know, they've been lying to us and manipulating us since the assassination of this Aline. I'm going, wait, Man. who's the they now? Like, what? <laughs> that Aline should come back and slap the shit out of him. They Aline should you just know what I'm saying? come back and for the, chase him all the way through hell. <laughs> but, but they're using that whole, like, oh, we're black and they're, 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 they're crushing us to justify actually them crushing these other black people. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Asians have actually said that on the street. I've been at the protest, and people were like, we are especially pissed because that Negro looks just like us. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. That's what they said, right? When Michelle yeah. McAlee was in power, he's a little light, bright like you a little bit, come out. You mean like Kalaji? Like, yeah. You mean Kalaji? We, we okay, expect okay. that from that guy, he right? Called, he, he sort of act like him, too. This is my show. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> so, no, but when that guy was in power, he's yeah. a little, people associated him with, right, the, the sort of, you know, predominantly light-skinned class of mm -hmm. bourgeois people. It's Kamau's like, cousin. Right? Hey, hey, hey. Right. <laughs> and then when this guy came to power, lit people in the street were literally like, no, we are especially pissed at that one. Because, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it, sh you, it shouldn't have been you. Well, we you pissed at him, too. a peasant man from whatever small town that like, you should have known better. Yeah. Fuck so, him. I hope the people burn his ass down. So, and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and, Dr. Prosper, we want to thank you so much for coming yes. on. We want to have you back because I want to get further into this discussion of Aristide, um, who um, I thought was a real radical leader who deserves far more credit. But we'll get into that later. I'm going to throw that one in there and let it lay there. Yeah. Um, do you have, I know you don't do a lot of social media, but yes. is there a place where folks, they want to find you, follow your scholarship, um, hear more about what's happening in Haiti that they can find you? Yes, I mean, I am on Facebook. I know that's real old school. Everybody's moved on. Um, I do have Twitter, Lamira Prosper, my name is the handle. So I do tweet occasionally, but I'm going to work on that. <laughs> you should, <laughs> I'm you work should. work on this social media profile thing. True. Get with the time. Well, we definitely uh, appreciate you coming out. Looking forward to seeing you back on. And, thank uh, you for having me. You know, and thank you for correcting me on Kube Tet Bule Kai. And, uh, That's it. That's exactly it. I had it right the first time, but you cut me off. Oh, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. Renegade culture, y'all. We be back. Yeah. Damn. I got Let's shit else to do, so. And them niggas, too. This don't exclude yeah. you. I won't duck you. The only thing worse than a bitch nigga is these pretty motherfuckers. <laughs> Dressing the park with no heart, getting hot niggas to rap with them. So the fuck what? A lot of whack niggas went flat. Uh, Why you on tour? Your girls getting yeah. manicures. Better leave security. I might knock on your door and get yours. Don't put it past me. I shot a patchy. How many I left in stitches? Now let me get back to these bitches. What's that, the Renegade Coaches in the building? You know, yeah. we back, you know what I'm saying? Yo, it's, it's, it's a hardcore show. We had yeah. uh, 
What's his name? Dr. Mamira Prosper. Dr. You know Mamira Prosper. Who broke it down on Haiti and shit like that. Broke it all the way down. My man over here, Naka was uh, admiring her sweater. Motherfucker oh, said her sweater was adorable. Oh, adorable. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Cibou play. Like, Cibou play. play. What the yeah. fuck is it? Cibou play. That's French. He don't know. That's French. He actually, he, he actually asked her if she spoke Haitian. Exactly. That's 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 nobody said these things. That's kind of embarrassing. You say it in Haitian? What the fuck does that mean? That's not the original word, French. He's like, you speak Haitian? Nigga went to Morris Brown, man. Uh, here we go again. I don't want to mention that, Kamal, man. I said, let, let that go. Yeah, let, let that go, man. Let yeah, that go. Yeah, let that go. Whatever, man. Now you sit over there smiling. Uh, anyway, man. Look like you went to Morris Brown. We anyway. got our mans in the building. Whoa. Okay, uh -oh. okay. Who we got in the building? Okay, the way you said it, I thought you were about to do it. This brother right here All got, right, a, got at least a dozen albums. He said 10, uh -oh. but I'd say I'm predicting the dozen, got it. I, I own about nine and a half of them motherfuckers. Anyway, this brother right here, uh, since you're always talking about how I first met, we first met in Chicago. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do a work around political prisoners. All right. When I first met him, he didn't have no goddamn tattoos on his face. In fact, I think he was educated at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, not an educated like uh, the ear doctor, because he's slow. But anyway, brother right here, he's been rocking for, a, for quite a while. All kinds of projects dropping. I think you dropped four projects last year. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You've seen them uh, mm -hmm. all over the globe. Literally. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Um, several different groups, several different projects. Mm -hmm. uh, most notably known for the DJ, tour DJ, official tour DJ for Dead Press. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to give it up for my man, Mike Flo in the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. How you feeling, brother? You doing okay? Man, I'm great, man. How y'all feeling? Man, good. We, we're live on arrival, man. We're up in this hot ass booth and shit. You know what I'm saying? We try, <laughs> try to act like we ain't burning the fuck up, but you know we gonna play it off like we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Fake it till you make it, man. No what doubt. Up? So you 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 on the planet Brooklyn, man? What's happening in Brooklyn these days? Man, shit is. You know, New York is New York, but it's shit weird, man. Like, um, it's like five black people left yeah. in Brooklyn at best time. Nah, well, <laughs> that part, but um, you know, I mean, it's over eight million people in New York. So although things in certain cities are kind of slower. It's still New York. And so maybe you don't see as many, but you see maybe 4 million people, which yeah. seems weird. It seems like it's empty. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Today's an important day, too. I, I, I would be remiss if I don't uh, shout out uh, Amadou Diallo, who was murdered yeah. by the fucking police, the That's pigs, right. in 1999. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 41 shots. Yeah. That's right. That's Because right. he had a yeah. wallet. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we can never forget Amadou yeah. because of the fact that he predated a lot of these social media uh, yeah. murders. More That's, or right. Or so, That's right. So, you know, yeah. rise yeah. in power, Amadou Diallo. But anyway, man, tell Absolutely. us about some of these new projects you got going on, man. Man, um, so, you know, for me, this whole um, event in time has given me the absolute time actually the actual time to write and really see the projects through so uh I, I deemed it really necessary man to keep your mind free i'm an advocate for free thought mm -hmm. and uh so i released a, a stay dangerous trilogy parts one two and three uh all produced by lex boogie from the bronx no um and so the stay dangerous really is about that it's about free thought it's about challenging um, the Associated Press. It's about uh, critical thinking and and saying no if you have to, saying yes to something if you have to. Any of those things can be deemed as revolutionary and dangerous even at times. Even advocating for yourself can be dangerous. So, um, and it's a fighter's term. Uh, obviously, you know, that even in that 11th round, that 12th round, I mean, the fighter may have been taking sh shots the whole fight. That right hand or that left hook he got is still significant and he's still dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but I did three of those. I did um, before uh, the Stay Dangerous trilogy, I did uh, uh, a project called Dogon, which was uh, an ode to the mystery. Uh, tribe out of Mali in West Africa. Mm. Um, I did that in conjunction with my man Ty Upgrade Roten. He's in Atlanta. So I've been doing these theme albums and I like dealing with other producers. That way if I don't have to make the beats and I can just have fun and write them. Um, and then after the Stay Dangerous trilogy, my most recent, uh, well, 
not most recent, but after that, uh, the Ogun Project came out. Ogun is an epic warrior's tale. It's a suite. It's three songs, but it's like a whole movie. And that's what Lex Boogie from the Bronx. And most recently, me and Ty Upgrade hooked up again uh, to do a full length called uh, Forest Frolics. And it's mm-hmm. like a trippy, uh, a psychedelic ride. And that's out. Those are the projects that I put out. Um, but right on the heels of the Stay Dangerous shit, I put out um, a project only for SoundCloud, and it's called Forward. Mm-hmm. And I did that in conjunction um, with Unseen FM out of DC. And it's kind of like jungle, drum and bass, but real rap, real fly nigga rap shit on top of that. And it's crazy and it's free. Word. So yeah, that's what I've been yo, doing. Yo, Mike, I know you can't wait to get in front of a crowd and DJ again, man. Oh my gosh, you know <laughs> bro. I mean, things have picked up some, I have some private clients that I do some stuff with. I got some stuff coming up next week here in New York as things are, but it's just, it's, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? We ain't did no tours, no dead press shit. So I've just been writing and recording and it's given me the time to do that. You know what I mean? It would, right. But yeah, I, would, I, I, I it's very spare, sparingly now that I even get a chance to DJ. You know, the ill shit about it, I want to say that there, there's uh, not too often you can find a, uh, a DJ who's just as a dope, just as dope as an MC, or an MC is just as dope as a DJ. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I definitely want to salute you on that. And also, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, and one thing, you know, whenever I ever called you, you always came through. So we, we appreciate that. Every fucking hip hop project that FTP movement has done, Mike Flow has been involved. You know what I'm saying? From rap to see how food, food uh, clothes, strong, shelter, you already know. all day. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, yeah. you know. Wasn't no way we gonna do Renegade Culture and not have you up on it. Matter of fact, you was on the last hey. podcast we had with uh, AJ, hey. Contraband Class. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so definitely. I appreciate the opportunities, man. I appreciate building with real people. You know what I'm saying? And nowadays, it's weird, man. You might not even see faces. I'm just happy I see faces. Yeah. Motherfuckers sound like they self and shit. Right, <laughs> right, right, it's, right. It's, it's the little, it's the little thing. We so, talked about a little bit. You know, you you've been prolific as a as a writer and putting out material. Why do <clears> you <throat> think that comes from? Like some people, artists, it takes them, you know, two years to to make one one piece of good artwork, and you've been you put it out consistently. Why do you think that is? I think it's because um, I use life as a springboard for my uh, inspiration. So I'm never really having like writer's blocks and things because as as life is happening, I am chronicling my my journey. Um, and so I always have things on my mind. I feel like people are more alike than different. Mm-hmm. And so if it's on my mind, chances are it's on yours. I see myself in you and I make those songs. Um, so, I mean, really, yeah, and so I start, my, the way my process is, I, I, I start a thought, like a, I could be out, man, and and hear a conversation, and I'm like, fuck, that's a, I bet other people have had that conversation. Mm-hmm. How do I feel about the conversation? And I'll put a note in my phone, and then I'll go back to multitasking and doing a multitude of other things. And then when I feel creative, then I'll go back into that note space and then I'll see if I can investigate those thoughts even more. And then before you know it, a fucking song. One turns into four, four, seven, and then it's done. Yeah. Word, word. So, I don't be overthinking this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I let it, I let it come as it comes and and I don't censor myself. Um, yeah, and I'm just really want to be present in it. And because I'm present in it, once I get started, I can finish it really really quickly well we looking we're looking forward to this new project with lex boogie because of the fact that let's shout out to lex boogie lex boogie is definitely shout out to lex boogie from the Bronx. unsung gorillas up in this motherfucker you know what i'm saying who who, who lex who, is a problem man listen <laughs> listen man he he don't he don't play the goddamn lotto he don't fuck around you know what i'm saying him man meeting hey. me keeping it keeping it hard body hey. um yeah 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 what, what we want to do we got a tradition here we got two things we want to do um, one, when we come back on the joint, um, the last several artists that we've had come through here, you know, they had to drop some bars. We had everybody from Cy Rock to Speech from Arrested Development, John mm-hmm. Robinson, you know what I'm saying, Felipe, Felipe. Luciano, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Wise Intelligent, Killer Mike, they didn't do the bars, but um, 
yeah, everybody's came through and wrecked this motherfucker. So um, we want to make sure that you get that. But before, uh, we're going to go to a quick break. But before we do that, we have another tradition we do called Knockers Nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, and we call it, it, it was originally called the bold question, but my man, the air doctor or knocker, his shit be so motherfucking nonsensical <laughs> that we had to get them call that motherfucker <laughs> knockers nonsense. See and, you know what I'm saying? And I think he broke the bowl, and so now we're dealing with this eight he ball. He broke the bowl? Uh, I think so, because he's got this eight ball up in here now. Oh, so, so this shit like a... Look like, like knockers head. Man, just, yeah. you know just take the goddamn oh, question like a, out. Black <laughs> version of your head. So, brother, there's a lot of questions up in here. I'm, I'm going to dig down I in hope your deep. head gets stuck. Fuck you, man. Um, <laughs> so we're going to read the question <laughs> off, and when we come back from our break, we're going to ask you to give us an answer, all right? Okay, back. Keep, keep in mind, it's some nonsense, so, yeah, you know. Because I don't even, I, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, I'm, I'm embarrassed. They're talking about, how did you have feet? What the fuck? That's that's a, how, did you make, <laughs> how did you make money as a teenager? I'm not sure why that's relevant to you in particular. You, you got to do with your music. R. Kelly's son or somebody. I don't know about some, some like street line, whatever it is. <laughs> when, when, when we come when back, we're going to get closer. Hey, he wrote it like this. When he, when he wrote it, he's like, how did you make money as a teenager? We're good. <laughs> we're good. Uh, we're good. Uh, we come back, yo. We're going to have you answer that question and hopefully drop a few bars. We're going to get coach, yo. Yo, yo, I recommend that you recognize and wipe that shit from out your eyes so that you can see. Bust the rhymes. Yo, there's no need for me to clarify. Feel my shit and watch me purify. Winning races, crazy, stupid, in different places. Back to basics, three dimensions all in your faces. I'm turning terrible as I burst. All of a sudden, it's Bust the rise, we bugging. How many suckers ain't saying nothing? What's happening, Renegade Coach? You in the building? You know what I'm saying? We back with our special guest, yeah, brother yeah. Mike Flo. Mike Flo's in the building. Yeah. Hey, sir, uh, okay. come on, always call somebody brother. I, it's how funny call you. Call brother, brother Mike Flo. Well, nobody <laughs> says brother <laughs> Mike Flo. I saw you stand with that shirt on uh, and shit like that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Ah, yeah, brother, Mike. Yo, brother Mike, let's get back. Hey, and brother I like Mike. saying brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we got this dumbass question. Um, this is a dumbass I'm a, question. A dumbass producer, but we're going to have you answer it anyway. Yes. So, how did you make your money as a teenager? I used to cut hair as a teenager. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I had, like, my mom had some friends, hmm? and she'd be like, yo, um, I asked for some money, and she'd be like, well, I'm not giving you no money, but you can cut my friend hair, and he'll pay you. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and I started, you... real talk, I started cutting grown men's hair with no practice. Oh. But I just had supreme confidence in myself, and I never fucked anybody's hair up. I was good. My mom was a beautician. I had watched her, like, deal in hair in general, mm -hmm. and they would pay me good. I cut you know, they, they all had like little picking pads. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it really too hard. shit to cut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna fuck you twenty dollars and it's like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they like, must, that's they must, how I made my money. They must have really liked your mom, because goddamn it, you and me cut my guy's hair. <laughs> Practicing on my shit. They, they, they really liked my mom. Okay, you know, okay. They was paying me. They, and they was every time, every time they would come by. I would cut, you cut their hair. hair. Yeah, the ear doctor yeah. still got a little little piece of patch on his head. Right? Oh, that's a mole. My bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Somebody skipped the spot. Anyway, <laughs> so brother Mike, <laughs> brother Mike, I'm gonna do it all the way now. Now it's just gonna be like that's a new name. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Yeah, brother, brother Mike in Chicago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Brother Mike. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Poetry Chicago. Oh, so yeah, I know you said yeah, you got yeah. new projects coming out. You got projects already hit. Where can folks pick up um pick up your albums and all that kind of stuff? My shit is streaming everywhere. I didn't produce any um, physical copies, so mm -hmm. Spotify, iTunes, a uh, Amazon, fucking Apple, YouTube, uh, you know, all the shits. Yeah. Title, it's everywhere. I didn't print any physical copies, and that's just what it is. You can stream, yeah. but I also encourage people to buy the music, especially if any DJs, because if although like say if you're running a virtual program like serato <clears throat> serato has a, a partnership with title and they have a partnership with um soundcloud so you can spend anything that's in the on any of those streaming services but as a dj if you want to make a mix you can't record mm. songs that you're streaming you feel me as a dj so although you can stream shit it's nothing like owning the file. Yeah. And so I encourage people to not only stream, but especially if you're a DJ and you need to do something or you make like, let's say you make graphics with your with uh, your phone or your computer and you want to add music to them, 
you need to own the file. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot on nothing. So you know, if you spend, uh, if you pay ten dollars for my album, you've probably spent more for less. And I feel like it's ten dollars worth spending. But yeah, the, all the streaming shits, I'm on all of them. All right. All Speak, right. Speaking of that. Uh, speaking of streaming and speaking of those sounds, we're going to get you to spit a little something in the tradition of renegade culture. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, that's what y'all do here? That, that's, what, that's, that's, that's how we do out this motherfucker. Listen, hey, look, we're going to see the contract and the motherfucking rider and all that, but that shit got lost in the mail. <laughs> Our attorney fucked it up, so, you know. Nick, Nick. Oh, Niggas came over that. with 40s and blunts. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, man. You knew. You know, you, some you rims, know. brother. Some rims for you. You know what I'm saying? That kind I knew of Mike knew uh, if, he, if nobody else knew. All right. <laughs> all right. Here we, let, let's see. Um, here we go. All right. This is from Ogun. You can get this right now. In the spirit of Ogun, gunmetal gray blacksmiths get in tune. Black on Blackstone era El Lucan. Black watch, X overseer, pedal the pinky. Iron mic, ironclad, grip of a steel vice. Mind of a steel trap, never forget it twice. Hues of a pewter, maybe tarnish the brass up. True vintage, one of one, tally to cash up your mask up. My muzzle off, the teeth bite, I might do it. Penetrate the Kevlar, go right through it. Divine fluid, the top seed. This ain't attorney, natural law of the land and need no attorney. Your perceptions don't concern me. I'm not afraid. Wild and untamed, you love the fame. I bodied the game and gave it back. I'm bored with it. Kuji Chagalia, my nigga, I'm born with it. The spirit told me, kill them all and leave a chain. They ridiculed the goon, gotta respect the name. It's unfortunate, same time as necessary. Exoskeleton exits might appear scary. Oh, 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 in the building. Oh, 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 oh in the building. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck what you heard. <laughs> oh. That's right, get your head cut off. Damn. Brother Mike Flow. Yo, I'm That's right. That was hot, yo. Yes, yes. Hey, hey, he gonna make, come on, made me say, Brother Mike. No, yeah, <laughs> coming around, yeah, yes, coming yes, around. Yes. Yo, thank you so much, Listen. Mike. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Uh oh, uh oh. In intimidated to meet me. Scared and shook. Too scared to sh look up and greet me. It's like the hoe and the Mac, the eyes to the flow. Reckless eyeballing like saying you want to go. So walk on by, bitch. Figure eight. This ain't for the fainted heart. Let's get it straight. And for the record, the right method and work ethic will persevere in times when shit looks hectic. The flow move like a spitting cobra, a strong essence, but truth really a loner. Assertive striker, primal fear, aggression, Tyson like speed, don't fuck with them's the lesson. Mm -hmm. See, that's the blessing, your comrades, an animal. Black Panther, Puma type, melanin rich. Recessive rats and research, ain't that a bitch? These devils telling you anything, the bait and switch, fuck a debate, bitch. This ain't your platform. Get the fuck out my face, pussy, in that form. Mm. In that order, let's make that the new norm. This ain't that, believe that, you misinformed. Old goon told me to go green, recycle the truth. Some of the youth be so green. But all oh, gee, you get it for me, and that's fine. Destroy and rebuild your fucking mind. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, RBG, nigga. Oh, that was oh, hot, yo. Thank That's you so hard, much, man. Mike Flo, for coming on. Salute, we appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Stay dangerous out this motherfucker. That's right, yo. We stay, to... stay dangerous, man. Yeah. Stay, stay last. Look alive. Stay dangerous. Get your back straight. That's right, no doubt, yo. brother. Be safe, man. We're going to catch you in a few reps. Thank y'all for coming power. out. Another great show. Brother, get culture, man. yo. All right, G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salute. All right, power. Yes, sir, brother. Salute.